Hey Ghostheads, it's Devin from Channeling Spirits. This is our second video that's covering Ghostbuster prop builds, but rather than doing a step-by-step -step process, in fact, this time we're actually going to be a review and prop build tips for Ecto Labs Belt Gizmo 8400 by Dave Tremaine. The belt gizmo is a small device that actually goes on the belt of the Ghostbuster, but the exact purpose of it really isn't clear. Certainly not as clear as the proton pack or the ghost trap. In the real Ghostbusters, it was used as a walkie-talkie. Room seven, maybe nothing. Or an emergency beacon. Uh-oh, Ecto 2's emergency beacon. Dan Aykroyd recently explained it functions more like a resistor. What, the, the resistor, your resistor on the side there? Yeah, that's just to absorb extra, like, that's a resistor, uh, as you would find in a car to uh, kind of compensate for, like, over voltage. So it kind of protects you from little shocks and stuff. Which doesn't fully make sense, but Dan also said the leg hose was a catheter, so... Yeah, and you know what the tube's for. Personally, in my head canon, I saw it as a graduated interface with specialized micro-ohm meter, or gizmo for short. Gizmo. I spoke with Dave and he actually sided with Dan. For the gizmo, I went with Dan Aykroyd's explanation that it is a safety resistor to help protect against shocks from the pack, and the lighting effects are some kind of readout system rather than just making it look pretty, although of course they never lit up in the movies. Ecto Labs 8400 is, of course, a great homage to the release date of the original film, 1984, and he also offers a Ghostbusters 2 belt gizmo, which is, of course, the Gizmo 8900, based on the year it was released, 1989. But what exactly was the prop? Unlike a lot of pieces that were meticulously created or stuffed inside a shoe polisher, the belt gizmo was pretty simple. For the motherboard, they took a Sanyo ICC-808D calculator, ripped it open, and put the innards in a holster of a tape measure. And while you might think it would be easier just to buy that calculator than assemble this kit, keep in mind one recently sold for 570 US dollars. Yeah. So before you get started, and one thing that I wish I knew before I started this build is it's going to take a while. Uh, honestly, I think the daughter board took like two or three hours in of itself. This is probably a three-day build, so if you have a whole weekend to spare, you might be able to knock this out, um, but it can be really tedious and time-consuming, and I wasn't aware of that going in, so you're going to have to do quite a few hours of work once you go into this. Read the instructions. Um, I printed this out, Ectolabs includes, uh, you can print it out or they have a digital PDF. Uh, the instructions are wonderful. I'm a very visual learner, so I just kept looking at the pictures thinking that I could jump ahead. Don't do that. Make sure you're reading what you're doing, otherwise you're going to make mistakes like I did and I'll cover some of the mistakes I did, but trust me, you're going to want to read the instructions. Don't just look at the pictures. And lastly, you're going to need a fair amount of super glue. Um, I use some of these small Loctite just because I don't like to have a lot of super glue wasted. I went through two of these and was pretty much on the last drop. So make sure you've got a fair amount ready because there's a lot of pieces you are going to be have to hot glue as well as super glue. And just be aware of that. Your fingers are going to get all raw and super gluey. Just be prepared for that. Why are my drippings with glue? So a lot of the initial build is going to be inserting these capacitors and then essentially clipping them and bending them and super gluing them. Now the daughter board, uh, Ectolabs actually included this break, great back cover so you can't really see. Uh, you might be able to see on the sides there that my super glue went a little bit crazy and so the back cover is kind of popping off um, but this really hides a lot of that mess. For the motherboard, um, obviously there's a lot of super glue and uh, hot glue mess, but this is all going to be hidden by the holster so it's not so bad um, and you won't have to worry too much about the aesthetics of that. Uh, there are a variety of these tiny transistors and the colors are pretty important if you want to be doing an accurate uh, build of the belt gizmo as accurate as you can to the original circuit board. 
So the instructions do actually provide a pretty detailed uh, color by color of what you're going to be looking for, but you've got a lot of small pieces that you could lose. So just be very careful as you are pulling these things out and that you're not losing anything on the table. So one of the issues that I had was there is on the daughter board this small black cable. In the instructions, it has you put through this hole here uh, with the diameter hopefully being large enough for the wire coating. Unfortunately, my diameter just wasn't large enough, so what I had to do is actually strip this wire, take uh, the wiring, and then just super glue it to the back. So just be aware that every once in a while the diameters might not be perfect, and you might have to kind of improv what you need to do to make a solution for it. Uh, the other problem that I had is, and again, this goes back to make sure you're reading the instructions and not just doing things, uh, it has you split this shaver cable uh, only about an inch and a half. I just decided to go crazy and I started splitting the whole, almost the whole thing. I think we better split up. Good idea. Yeah, we can do more damage that way. And I had to recoil most of it. Now, luckily, you're gonna see there's not a whole lot that you can tell as far as uh, it looking too bad. It's more something that I just know that I made that mistake. So make sure you're not doing that. So for the motherboard, if you can notice, uh, it's actually not a real circuit board. It is a 3D printed with a three color process. Uh, so you have this maroon base, you've got some gold, and then you've got this green wiring. So all in all, from a distance, you really can't tell, especially with the accuracy of the capacitor, capacitors, the resistors, the transistors, the chips. Um, so, and most of this is really hidden by the holster itself. This is probably the least accurate part of the build, but for the sake of not having to solder as well as probably some cost, it, it really is pretty negligible as far as appearance. I think it, overall it is really a pretty beautiful looking build with a lot of great accuracy as far as the other pieces to it. But if you're someone who you know really is uh, hell-bent on having something as accurate as possible even though this is a small piece on your belt most people won't even notice most of it hidden by a holster you might not enjoy this kit as much but again uh, then you really have to get into the soldering aspect and a lot of that can get really complicated really quickly so the 3d pinned circuit board does require you to punch essentially holes through in order for you to fit the resistors and chips and circuitry through initially i had used this small paper clip and i was punching through and then repunching and repunching uh, i did upgrade to a jumbo paper clip which had a little bit better success um, if you can find a little bit more accurate tool it may be even a tiny drill bit that's probably going to save you some time rather than having to poke, poke over and over so from there, it's a lot more of taking the resistors, transistors, capacitors, all that, taking their wires, cutting them, bending them, and then hot gluing them to the back. Um, one complication is you have these small capacitors here, and there's actually some heat shrink tubing. So what you'll have to do is actually measure out and cut this tubing shrink it with uh, either a heat gun or I used a lighter for these individual ones uh, and then curve them. So what I did is actually took one of my small screws and just kind of bent the wire into that question mark or that R shape there to kind of get that form. Uh, but where it gets really complicated are these integrated circuit chips. Um, there are 144 of these little gold pins. There's two types. There's longer ones and then there's shorter ones. And they come in uh, long packs where you have to individually pull them out with pliers. And it gets very difficult and time consuming. And that's really where I started to get frustrated because each and every single one of these is going to have 18 large clip or large pins and 18 small pins. So even after you've pulled them all out, then you have to insert them into each one of these chips, and then you have to try and carefully navigate them into the pre-existing holes on the circuit board, and that also can get really frustrating. Um, the other complicated part is these Nixie tubes. So in the kits, you can get two sets of Nixie tubes. You can either get ones that have long wires or short wires. If you get short wires, unfortunately, it gets a little difficult because um, Actolabs does include some additional 
2.5 millimeter um, copper tinned wiring so you can extend them into the appropriate lengths but that means that you are then measuring out and cutting 84 strand or 64 strands of this wiring and then having to essentially bind them and braid them together so you're having to do that 64 times then you have to measure out and cut um, some red heat, heat shrink tubing, clear, black, and then red again. And again, that's 64 of those. You have to shrink all of those. So what I ended up using is just uh, a candle because I found that a lot more productive and a lot easier rather than constantly using a lighter and uh, damaging up my thumb, which had already been pretty beat up from trying to stick in all sorts of pins and small pieces. So you might want to save your time by just lighting a candle being able to have that heat source that you can just reuse through. The Nixie shelf, I think, actually is a really good job of hiding the electronics, which are just kind of hidden right under um, a lot of the, the wiring. And so you don't even notice that it's there. Um, and it has this really cool control panel on the back and we'll go over some of the different settings because it's not just a simple light up, it actually has a different modes, different colors, so we'll go over that. Okay, so if you hit the toggle switch right up here and turn it on, the first mode that we're gonna have is called chase, where it's just a light flashing down. Pretty cool. All right, if we hit the next one, then we have what's called wipe. So a uh, little bit slower, you have just kind of more of a full rather than one by one of the LEDs. Then we have called bounce. So it kind of looks like it's a little readout system that's going back and forth. Then we have what's called pulse. So you can see it's just kind of pulsating. We have strobe, my least favorite one. Personally, it kind of gives a cool electronics effect. My personal favorite is sparks. Um, it just kind of, for me, matches the Ghostbusters aesthetic of things not going right. Of course, their equipment would probably be malfunctioning. So you get kind of it just sparking. We have what's called steady on, or it's just kind of consistently on. And you have the beautiful rainbow readout. And then if we go back to just chase, then not only does it come in white LEDs, but of course you can go through, we've got red, we've got orange, yellow, green, got kind of a turquoise, got blue, violet, pink, and of course back to white. So you can select any of those colors, any of those modes, anything that kind of matches you. Um, you know, maybe if you're using the, you know, uh, video game slime blower enhancement, maybe then you want to put it on green to kind of match uh, the output of your proton stream, you know, whatever you want to do, just something fun. So really, once you've gotten through um, the most difficult part, which is going to be the integrated chips as well as the Nixie, Nixie tube uh, wiring and tubing, um, then it's really just what a lot of what we've done before. So, you know, you're taking these resistors, again, you're inserting them through the circuit board, you're going to be cutting, bending, hot gluing them, you're going to be super gluing some of these other chips here, and really just having it all come together, and it becomes pretty simple from there. One thing I did neglect to mention is that uh, unfortunately with the Nixie wiring, I actually was not supplied with enough additional 2.5 millimeter uh, tinned copper wire. So what I had to do is actually, uh, I happen to have some audio wire that I used for my proton pack build. I had to split this wiring, strip it, measure it out. But luckily I believe the diameter is exactly the same because it worked perfectly. Um, same kind of malleability, but just be aware that if your kit doesn't necessarily come with enough, uh, there are some other options. You, you might just have to improvise with that. So one thing that I had bought actually before I got this kit is I bought a holster from a pretty prominent uh, Ghostbuster prop building site and it is terrible. It's really flimsy leather. Um, this cost me $50. This was not worth it at all. So um, save your money because actually Ecto Labs offers their own gizmo holder. It's very sturdy. Uh, it's going to fit this piece perfectly, which I'll show you in a second. And also it comes with the ability that it can store in the back 
the 9 volt battery needed to run the belt gizmo kit. So I'll show you it all, all assembled, but again, it fits perf perfectly or it comes with some, um, some double-sided Velcro that you can actually, you know, Velcro it in for a little bit more security, but it fits nice and snug and it doesn't go anywhere if you just insert it into the holster itself. So what are the pros? Well, like I said before, there's absolutely no soldering involved. So if you're, you have no experience, you don't have a soldering gun, you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's just a lot of hot gluing, super gluing the pieces. So it makes it a lot easier for you. As I said before, it's fairly accurate. A lot of these pieces aren't in production anymore. They're from the 1970s. So these chips are not something you're gonna be able to find. So you do have to kind of make them yourself, which can be a little bit difficult, but overall you have a fairly good looking piece of equipment that has some really cool electronics. And that's probably my favorite feature is it's such a small little device that really just sits on you but it can really add and plus up to your overall look. Uh, and lastly, there's just a lot of detailed instructions. I think Ectolabs went to a great amount of care and detail for such a small piece of equipment, and they went really the extra mile to try and make sure that your build is as seamless as possible, uh, even though I wasn't one to read the instructions, so mine wasn't as seamless as possible, but hopefully yours will be. Cons, like I said before, it's, very time consuming, more so than I expected. Uh, I thought this would be just kind of an evening build and it really wasn't, there was a lot more to it. And so I would caution you with that. The other thing, it can be really tedious. Um, it's not a bad thing because you really do have a good product in the end, but just be aware if you're expecting something just kind of quick and easy, most of the pieces are gonna be included but just know that there's going to be a lot that you've got to put in it as well. So here it is fully complete in its holster. When I was putting this in, you know, it was a tight fit, but I didn't knock any of the inner capacitors off. Uh, it fits nice and snug. Like I said, if you want some additional support, you can put on some Velcro. I didn't do that for mine. And you can see, you know, as you kind of move it around and jostle it, it's not going anywhere. Then on the back, you're gonna see where that uh, nine volt battery can be stored with this nice little carrying spot. You just thread the wires through the belt uh, slit and you have a wonderful, just ni nice belt gizmo that looks very accurate, has some very cool electronics to it. Overall, despite my fingers being raw, Despite this taking a little bit longer than I expected, I do highly recommend this. I think this is a great prop. That's definitely something is worth um, the time and love that Ectolabs has put in it. They also have a lot of other products and I'll link to them down in the description below as far as what they offer. Again, we are still doing our normal video essays with Heidi. Uh, that's not going to change, but occasionally we do like to do something different. So hopefully you enjoyed this. We've got some other things coming along the way that are very exciting. So if you like this video and think we deserve it, this is it. This is definitely it. Please subscribe. Please be sure to check out our official merchandise, including exclusive blueprints of your favorite ghost busting gear. Check out the link in the description to see what's available. Select Patreon tiers, get five to 10% off. As always, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. I'm Devin from Channeling Spirits, and thanks for watching. So what exactly does the belt gizmo do? We're just gonna keep going? We're just gonna keep going?